in terms of traveling with a base, uh, obviously that's a... Uh, <laughs> that is Ron Carter and that moan of despair we all know so well when we're thinking about traveling with a base. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contra Base Conversations, and we are doing best of episodes here around the holidays featuring guests talking about specific topics from our over 500 episode archive. And this is all thanks to Krista Copper, who has cataloged and organized all 500 plus of these episodes and what topics have been talked about when. So the topic today is traveling with a base and largely plain travel. So you'll be hearing five guests. Ron Carter, who we'll hear a little bit more of in just a second. Diego Zacharias, Nick Lloyd on Travel Next and how they work, which is something more and more of us are adopting. Kevin Smith of Willie Nelson's band on traveling with his Upton base. And Marco Panacea on a topic near and dear to my heart, walking with his base all over a major city, in Marco's case, New York City. And these are shorter episodes. I want to give a quick shout out at the intro to our sponsors, Diderio Strings, the bass violin shop, Upton Bass, A440 Violin Shop, and Colstein music. Learn more about all of them and the great things they do on our website. And you'll be learning more about them in greater depth on our longer episodes. So we're going to dig in first off with Ron Carter and air travel, followed by Diego Zacharias on flying with his base. Uh, in terms of traveling with a base, uh, obviously that's a <laughs> right. I know it hasn't gotten any easier over the years. Oh man, are you uh, are you just doing the gauge full size case? Uh, how are how are you getting an instrument around these days? Well, when I can, when I cannot drive to the gig, basically Washington D.C. or Boston or Philadelphia, I'm like everybody else flying to wherever the gigs are either inside the United States or Europe or Japan or South America. Mm-hmm. Uh, it depends on what, how extensive the tour is. And uh, if I know anyone there whose bases I've played, played before, I do have something called a flyaway made by Lemur Base, which is uh, the next best thing to mine that's portable. Uh, I just came back from a tour last two months ago, and I played uh, approximately 35 sets, 35 40-minute sets, and I had... Uh, seven bases, and there's really a tough time for, for me to accept that I could have my bass, and can I make this bass do what I think my ear tells me is possible on a bass? Uh, there are several, several guys that have had their bases reconfigured to be a cutaway or flyaway bass, and, and some guys have bought the check from David Gage, and some have set up bases in Europe that they can go and always get the same bass. I'm kind of, I trust my, my judgment. I kind of trust what the guy's going to give me, and I've had some great luck using bases that they provide, and I've had some not so great luck. So it's kind of, again, it's like I'm going to school free trying to make this base do what it can't do for somebody else and see if I can get lucky. What are you using right now in terms of transporting your base? It's because I used to travel with the small trunk mm-hmm. where the, I took up uh, out of the neck and the normal, this half base truck. Yeah. The, the problem I found that the, after three or five or four flights, the, the base case was very much broken. Mm-hmm. So I realized that uh, when the guys there in the airport, when they are working with the luggage, they see a half base case. It's going just one guy to pick it up. And then when he takes it, he, he realizes like 25 kilos and then it's dropping it. So, but the big cases, they always call another guy. There are two. And if they found these black uh, new cases that are very light, you know, and they find it is light in two, because it's going to be light. Mm-hmm. So they treat it a bit more gentle. At least, I don't know if it's this true, it's my dream or my wish. But now you see, I came with this big case and the base is healthy. Mm-hmm. So that's why this, try, this time I try to fly like this. Yeah. 
the baggage handler psychology. It's, you know, a, it's an important thing to think about, though. You, you, yeah. you mentioned that to me, and it made total sense that, that yeah. I think it's this, you know, we are always thinking on that, guys, yeah. <laughs> when we take a plane. <laughs> Next up, we've got Nick Lloyd just talking about how the travel neck systems and the one that he uses works, and that's a system from Jim Ham, former podcast guest, and we'll go then right into Kevin Smith of the Willie Nelson Band on traveling with his Upton bass. How, how many uh, travel necks are you doing these days? Is that pretty common? Yeah, it's becoming, it's becoming more common. Um, right now, I've got two in the works that will be done in, in late March, and they're for their commissions for players. So yeah, there. I mean, it's, it's not getting any easier to fly. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, read that about every month. You know, over the years, I tried to come up with a travel neck design that I liked, and I just, I, you know, I could I couldn't invent it. And then I realized someone has already invented it. It's just maker Jim Ham, mm-hmm. base maker in Canada. So I called him. I said, you know, would you show me your design? I'll would would you sell me your parts? And he said yes. So I bought a number of sets from him. It, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a wonderful design, and I'm confident that I will never get a phone call from a bass player on the road saying, "I can't get my neck in." You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like right. down the road, I see other travel neck designs, and like down the road, eight years, ten years down the road, that neck's not going to go in. <laughs> you know, Jim's plan is so so well thought out. He's got the mind of an engineer, and it's just really smart and hassle free. And that's what I want. Like, once it leaves the shop, I don't want to have to do something twice. You know, obviously, when you're on tour, it's like the last thing you want to worry about is, is his neck going to go in and stay in? I'm so enjoying the Upton. Uh, it's It's been kind of a, revel- a revelation for me. You know, I've never had a brand... Well, no, I've had... That's not true. I've had brand new bases but I've never had a carved top before. What were you doing in terms of travel before that? Were you just bringing a, a, an upright in a regular case? Or what did you do before the Upton? Yeah, yeah. I was bringing uh, just a regular plywood base and putting it in a David Gage case, full size. And I, and I put a Reunion Blues gig bag over the, over the base, and it fits great into those Gage cases. So it's really, I've been traveling like that for as long as I can remember, pretty much, and, and whenever I need to. And it's... The Reunion Blues and the David Gage just fit so nice. It's really been great. We'll round out today's Best of episode with Marco Panacea, and I had the good fortune to chat with him in person in New York City this fall, and we talked about many topics, but one was getting around New York City largely walking with the bass. And that's something that I do here in San Francisco. I love walking. I've been doing it uh, long walks, five mile plus walks, 10 mile, 15 mile even on the weekends for years, uh, over a decade at this point. And if there's a gig that's three miles or less, I almost always walk it. Uh, It leads to much humor (laughs) sometimes. So Marco and I talk about that to round out today's episode. Talk about that particularly New York experience yeah, of yeah, yeah. of ha- not of taking your base not in a car. Wow. Yeah, yeah, what's what's definitely. that like? Well, I mean, you know, there there are very few people here in New York, especially musicians that own a car because it's kind of unnecessary. Uh, first of all, the uh, parking fees uh, if you want to park in a lot, you know, or um, they're very 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 steep. You know, mm-hmm. it's very very expensive. You know, like here in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, a permanent parking spot in a uh, in a covered lot, you know, would be about you know seven hundred dollars a month, uh, or more if you have an a, an SUV, you know. Uh, so you know, it's like basically paying a mortgage, you know, like uh, just to park your car, and then you there's all sorts of chances of getting tickets, right. and then you know you have maintenance and uh, and uh, and gas and all that. So um, he, the nice thing about New York is that it's a very geographically compact kind of city mm-hmm. everything is kind of within walking distance and it's very flat for most of it uh so you know i live in midtown manhattan near Times square uh if i have a gig in the village or if i have a gig on the upper west side or the upper east side i, I won't think twice about walking there it's about like maybe three to four uh miles walking uh it takes about you know one hour to like 90 minutes you know but it's it's really great i mean so, but sometimes i do have to make sure that i that I that I that I carry, you know, like uh, 
clothes for for just for the performance, yeah. you know, because I don't want to get there all sweaty in my yeah. tux and and all that, you know. Well, I I just yeah. love this so much because I feel like I found a kindred spirit. I, yeah. I I always felt like I was the only one who would walk his base three or four yeah, miles. Yeah. I do that no, myself in yeah, San Francisco. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I have yeah. the a double challenge. I will tell you, and you could probably yeah. relate. I have to walk my base first through the financial district, so uh-huh. it's very busy with yeah, people yeah, in yeah, suits right. moving yeah, quickly. Yeah, then through a neighborhood I know, you know, the Tenderloin, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. a very different kind of yeah, strangeness. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, favorite strange moments walking the base, either taking it to the subway or walking it around, that, thinking back, anything, whether it's people calling out things? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, we're, uh, I'm sure that most of the people who are listening to this podcast are bass players, you know, so they can totally relate. Uh, if I had a dime for every time I've been asked, is that a cello? Yeah. Uh, I'd be a millionaire by now, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the, the standard questions, you know, is that a cello or, gee, that's a big guitar? Uh, how much does it weigh? Uh, don't you wish you played the flute? You know, I hear all sorts of stuff, especially in the more, in the, you know, in the touristy areas, you know, near here, like Times Square. Uh, and uh, and one thing I, I've learned uh, is that I... I, I have to try to avoid Times Square as much as possible because I can literally like get stuck there. Mm-hmm. Because it's most of the times, you know, it's visitors, you know, who come maybe from a place, you know, where the tallest building is like four stories high. So, you know, everybody's like gawking up, you know, yeah. like, you know, kind of looking at, at those tall buildings and the lights, you know. So, uh, trying to walk, uh, in the middle of all that with a base is not a good idea. So sometimes I just make my, my, my path, you know, like I, I just, uh, make it like, it takes me like an extra 15 minutes to, because I purposely have to try and avoid Times Square, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend walking through Times Square with a base. <laughs> I got the same move in San Francisco because, yeah. you know, P- native New Yorkers get into work or something like that. They're yeah. in a hurry. They'll move around you. Oh, that, totally. yeah, I yeah. find the financial district, I, people, they see the base and sometimes they register a little surprise, but they, they get out of my way. But yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, tourist areas, I, I try to avoid too. Fisherman's Wharf or anything like families moving slowly, yeah, blocking the whole sidewalk, right, right. looking up. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is like waiting to board their ferry or, you know, to Alcatraz. <laughs> That's going to do it for this best of episode. Thank you so much to Krista Copper for going through and cataloging and organizing all these topics. It makes these sort of episodes possible. And I think it's a really cool direction. Thank you also to everybody else involved in Contrabase Conversations. Steve Hinchy, Michael Cooper, our audio editors, Mitch Mooring, who puts these episodes together, and Trevor Jones, who publishes and promotes all of these. Thank you so much. Reach out to me at feedback at ContrabasseConversations.com. And I am your host, Jason Heath. We'll be back soon with more life on the low end of the spectrum.